following is a presentation of ComedyVoices.com. Hey, what's up there? Happy New Year. Happy, uh, you know, life. Have a good life. Enjoy your life. It's uh, Joe List here. That's Mark. Oh, Norman. And uh, welcome to the show. I Anything you want to add, was. Mark? No, I feel so embarrassed about that thing. I'm, I'm out. What thing? That old Norman. What the hell was that? Yeah, it was fun. It's not like you're drinking whiskey out of a glass bottle. Oh, I could use a drink. Yeah, me too. Anyways, it's a good episode, I think. I got a little nervous in the middle, but uh, who knows? We're both gay. Have fun. Yeah. Put it in me. <laughs> hey, it's time to visit ComedyVoices.com. Powered by digital media. Find your voice. Led by stand-up labs and UCB comedy, you'll get your fill of cutting-edge laughs to get you through the daily grind. Subscribe to your favorite show now on ComedyVoices.com, a digital media production. Coming to you from the top of the stand-up New York Comedy Club, this is a stand-up labs production. Powered by ComedyVoices.com. Find your voice. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me And I can't choose what I want to say Is this it? Let's do it. This is this makes us the show. This is the show. These, uh, these, these earmuffs, eyes. these earmuffs look bigger than normal. Are these new? Yeah, because you look like, you look like Princess Leia over there. Oh, do I? Yeah, you got a big giant, you know, buns. I was uh, telling this story the other day. Try this on for size there, Mark. Are we, we on? on? We're going. That's what oh, I just said. Oh, oh, I didn't know we were going. That's what I said. I was like, let's make this the show. And oh. you were like, yeah, you confirmed. Oh, okay. Shit, I didn't know if he confirmed. He confirmed. Well, we're in, baby. I'm Princess Leia. Good to be here. <laughs> Tuesdays. <laughs> I'm Han Solo, and uh, if you haven't heard, I'm dead. <laughs> dead at the hands of some fucking douche. Wait, you're giving it away? Wait for a month in. We talked about this two weeks ago and a week ago. I haven't seen it. What are you talking about? We discussed this on length, at length. I'm joking. At length. And we got a tweet today. And I don't appreciate these tweets. This Uh-oh. guy writes this. He writes, uh, what are you talking about? Star Wars is a piece of shit. He's like, look at the prequels. So what does that mean? Because the prequels <laughs> were worse, this doesn't suck? I don't know what that means. That's like saying, hey, World War I, we're, we're dying of the flu. And you're like, hey, take a look at the Holocaust. I mean, that's out of order. But you get it. Yeah. Just because one thing is worse doesn't mean this thing sucks. Right. Yeah, the prequels are worse, but this sucks too. I think the prequels are better. Oh boy. Wait a minute. The fucking the Jaja Binks. Oh, oh Jaja. Yeah, the, the Empire is not a prequel. That's a movie. I forget. They came before. It's hard. These I, guys with their wacky dyslexia. It's topsy turvy. It's literally topsy turvy. So let me tell you this story there, uh, Harold, Hank, Mark. I prefer Harry. Harry! Yo! As well as the Hendersons. Oh, that movie, I never got. I think it was a show, too, wasn't it? It was a bug. It caught on. It caught like fire. Yeah, that and Alf, neither one of them. I don't know. Is it an alien? Is it a dinosaur? What is this? I'm not a fan of puppets. I'm going to say it. <laughs> I hate puppets. Get out of here. You're not a real thing. Maybe a sock puppet. Maybe. Maybe! Because <laughs> I can rip that thing off. <laughs> No one takes a sock puppet seriously, so it's all right. But a real pup, you're like, is it real? No! It's got a stick on its hand to move it. I'll tell you, you're about to take your pants off, take a shit, and swim in it after I say this. They're already off! Remember the, <laughs> Remember the show? Here's the show. Oh, boy. If you like this show, it's the end of a friendship. Here it comes. But I, got a good <laughs> I got a good feeling. Well, Sesame Street I got a, is all right. I got a good feeling you're going to jump through the TV set, smash it, and fuck me right in the asshole, come in my eyes. Oh, well, now I'm excited. When I say it. Please tell me you hated this one. I don't even remember the name. The Dinosaurs? Ah! Uh, remember the dinos? Of course, of course, the dinosaurs. That's yeah. a primetime sitcom? Get real! <laughs> my dad loved that show! I thought my dad had special needs! <laughs> I had an uncle who liked it. I still think he got special needs. Not the mama? That's your big big hit? Not the baby, I think. Not, no, not the mama. He'd hit the dad. Not the mama. Not the mama. Oh, I thought it was not the baby. 
No, no, no. The baby said, not the mama. Oh, I get it. That show is on lunchboxes, t-shirts, billboards. I tattooed it on my taint. It's oh, everywhere. Get that shit out of here. I know. People love That was 9 o'clock ABC or whatever. That's a piece of shit. The dinosaurs. What are you talking about? Yeah. They're wearing flannel. Right. Come on. That was the 90s. That was post-Jurassic Park, I think. Like, mm. Jurassic Park came out, and everything went dino crazy. It was all dinos after that. Oh, is that. that what it was? I believe so. I believe they busted the door open, and everything had to be dinosaurs. God, isn't that funny how the industry does that? All right, we like this. Flood the market. Right. Well, that show is a piece of shit, but... Yeah. The story I was trying to tell about Star Wars and Princess Leia, uh, I remember... I was telling the story the other day, and it was the first time I ever fell in love with uh, my former... Uh, my previous girlfriend. Two former girlfriends. Not I was, Becca. No, previous before that, even. Kelly? And, no, Kelly. Whitney? Uh, her name is Steph. Steph! With an ah. F. Oh, Same that's... name as my sister, which was a little topsy-turvy as well. Interesting. But different spellings. So. And Leia is Luke's sister. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But there's another thing, too, that people would uh, always say that. Be like, oh, you, boy, you got a, your girlfriend's the same name as your sister. That's weird. I'm like, well, they're two different human beings. Hey, I don't get it's that. It's not really a problem. I've fucked a lot of Liz's in my day, and that's my mom's name. Yeah, I don't get I fucked a girl named Joey. I fucked a girl named Joey. Oh, South uh, Carolina? North Heavy? Carolina. Heavy, gross, thin, sweaty, pimples? No, black. Oh, okay. Yeah. A black Joey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, also, uh, uh, you'll usually only see those in Australia. Yeah, she was a kangaroo, but she was black. What was the also all about? I was going to say she was also a kangaroo. Uh-huh. But you got there. Oh, we did it. The pouch, the pussy. Yes. Yeah, I fucked a girl named Joey on, uh, on, on 4th of July in, uh, I forget where it was. But anyways, I fucked a kangaroo. You should see her box. Oh, I like that. That works. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. All right. So, anyways, so I had uh, this uh, this uh, this girlfriend, and uh, we were hanging out or whatever, and uh, there was like two like uh, buns at lunch, like a like a like a uh, like a muffin. Yeah. Like a bread bun, a biscuit, a biscuit. <laughs> and she took uh, she took the two biscuits. Uh huh. It reminded me of Princess Leia because she took the two biscuits and she pretended they were like a Walkman. Oh, I like, like a radio. This gal. And uh, it was the first time I'd ever seen a girl. Not that girls aren't funny. Oh, but boy. I had I'd never seen a girl make a joke. I'd only talked to my right. mother and my aunts and my yeah. grandma. And she did like a physical thing. I'd never seen anyone do it. She was yeah. pretending to listen to headphones with buns. And uh, I, I had like the, the my heart flooded. Doves flew. It was a whole thing. My uh, penis moved. I'm, I love a funny broad. Yeah. I've, I've dated 100% funnies. Yeah. I love funny. It, and it is rare. And it sounds like an insult. But as a kid, you didn't see funny chicks. No, there wasn't. I mean, cause, well, first of all, and here's the reason: not because there wasn't funny girls. I didn't talk to girls. Ah, uh-huh. there was no. I'm sure girls were hanging out, joking around. I guess so. Yeah, but I never spoke to them because they were girls. I'm afraid of girls. I was. T- I didn't have a girl, f- a friend who was a girl till I was, you know, 32. Yeah, same here. 29 for me, but yeah, uh, I'm a little, uh, you know, more open minded. Ah, uh, boy. I don't know. I just. I was I, joking. I wasn't serious. I was friends with. I was always a satellite douche. I had, I had my own friends, but I always broke away to like hang out with other groups. Mm-hmm. And I had, the, you know, those groups. It was like four girls and four guys, and they would all hook up eventually. Yeah, I never had that. I was one of that. Yeah, that was like Save by the Bell and Fred, like Zach's fucking everyone. Yeah, nine hundred two one zero did that. I never watched that one. That was too serious. I think I never really watched it either. But uh, the girl was hot. Yeah, but that's like a situation where they can't write in all these new people, so like, everyone just fuck each other. It'll get spicy ratings. Yeah, yeah, but it happens in real life. It's a real thing. Right. But I never had any repeat fuckings. I have had three uh-huh. girlfriends. Those are the only three girls I ever fucked more than once. Everybody else it was a one-time deal, mm. not because of a poor performance, I don't think, but because of confidence. I was like, well, clearly that person never wants to see uh, me again after seeing that dick. See, I feel like that with girlfriends. I'm like, well, she doesn't want to see me again. And they're like, why don't you call? Oh, interesting. But you've only had one girlfriend, right? I've had two or three datings, like I dated for, you know, four months or so. Right, right. But nothing hardcore, like the 10-year. Yeah, 10 years. Boy, that's a decade to you and me. That is. Boy. It was a doozy. Yeah, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of trials, tribulations. I've lived a whole, like, a whole married life almost, and it, now I'm back. Interesting. Yeah, I've seen the other side. I think married life, I think there's a house involved and a puppy. Well, you had a puppy. We had a puppy in an apartment. A puppy in an apartment, that's not bad. Well, I'll count it. We're looking at the judges. They say, yes, that counts as a married life. Thank you. Stephen Avery, guilty, though. Yeah, that's a hell of a, that's a, hell of a program they made there. Yeah, people are talking. Mm-hmm. Every conversation always comes back to that, including this one. Yeah. 
Making a murderer. Yeah. Murderer is a tough word for me. Murderer. Yeah, there's a lot of er er. You know, there's a murder of crows. How cool is that? What's that mean? That's the group. You know, it's a school of fish, a gaggle of geese, a murder of crows. No kidding. Yeah. So if you murder, it's a murder of murders. Wait, huh? It's a murder of a murder. If you murder crows? If you shoot them out of the sky. You're you know, murdering a murder. Murder the murder. I never thought about that. Yeah, well, there there it is. Is. Seems like you would have thought of that. Never crossed. Interesting. Never thought about killing a crow. You ever shoot a bird as a kid, you know, with BB gun? I never shot anything one time. Mm. Not a gun guy. Never shot a gun into the air or anything? No. Wow. No, I've played with guns. Like, I played guns when I was uh-huh. a kid. A lot. And uh, I've held real guns and played with those. With yeah. no, you know, bullets and you're running around. It is fun to play with, a, like, pretending to play with a gun. Oh, yeah. But uh, I'm not interested in shooting a gun. I just don't. Uh, it's fine that people do. And uh, that's that's cool with me. I'm not as fucking, you know, Nazi as people think. But uh, I don't. I choose not to have that responsibility. I don't mm. want to hold a live gun, fire it. <laughs> it's yeah. not. In, it's not in my interest. Even in a can or a bottle. Not interested because the chances of me accidentally shooting somebody increase. 100 <laughs> percent right that's yeah. not a responsibility i'm interested in i don't want to do surgery and i don't want to fire a gun uh-huh i don't i'm not no 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 deal not into it yeah but surgery's different because you can't you know fuck around with surgery 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 right. gun you can still shoot at a tree or uh you know in the air uh true and but there's also you're holding a fucking death device in your hand that's true you're holding a tool for murdering but a car not designed for anything else Ah. other than murder so and again i'm not anti have a gun buy a gun yeah (laughs) i just think it's silly and it's not for me i'd rather uh hike or Uh have sex or jerk off or watch a movie or ride a bike or any number of things that don't involve me holding an instrument of death. Never fucked a girl with a gun to her temple? Uh, no, but if you have, that this would be a spicy, perfect time to tell well, that story. Let me tell you about Hoboken. No, no. Uh, Did he bow? Yeah, whoa, what a scene, huh? Boy, a great scene, great movie. When I was a kid, my friend had a BB gun, and he pumped it ten times. He said, see that blue jay? And he shot it, and uh, it fucked me up. I felt so bad. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, but that was just... You know, for dudes, that was just par for the course. There was a couple friends who laughed, and we all they all high fived, and I was like, "Oh, that got me." Yeah, it's weird. I eat meat, and I feel guilty about it sometimes. I eat meat, and I love it. I eat meat all the time, every meal. But uh, the idea of shooting an animal, I'd rather someone else do it and just present it to me. And I know that's uh, whatever you call it, uh, hypocritical. Hypocritical. I was gonna say oxymoron, but I that don't doesn't know about make that. sense. But uh, yeah, I don't. The, the the thing of going into the and like trophy hunting is really bizarre to me. Uh huh. Like to like sit in the woods and it's tranquil and you see a deer that's part of the thing and then just blow it away and be like, ah, and take yeah. a picture with it. That to me is real, uh, strange. It doesn't seem fair. I could see if you were wrestling with a deer. Yeah. Then you shoot it. But even that seems weird to be like, I'm just going to go fuck up this thing that's not fucking with me. I know, it's odd. But, but I hey, guess that's humanity. But I eat the fucking meat. Yeah. So what am I going to do? What am I going to say? I'm hungry. I just don't want to be there when it gets shot in the face. Well, what'd you do for New Year's? Oh, Nelly. Do you love New Year's? I'm, uh, I'm so so on New Year's. I don't like it. The, the, I don't like the whole package. The whole re, the what do you resolution yeah. bothers me, and the whole we gotta have the best night of our lives. Or we're gonna kill ourselves. That whole thing bothers me. And yeah, then, it's too much pressure. It's a lot of pressure. But I remember one time uh, years ago, me and my pal Tom Dustin and Dan Hershon, who I was just with, and uh, our other friend, friend Daniela, we all. Did like a road gig together on New Year's Eve Eve. It was uh-huh. December 30th. Yes. And we went to the uh, strip club during the day. And then we did the show and it was crazy. We all got shit faced and we were pushing each other in the bushes and we all, you know, hooked up and we kissed and we, I fucked Hershey on in the butt. And, yeah, uh, you did. He spit in my eyes and then, you know, Tom threw up in my asshole. Mm-hmm. And it was just this wild night. We drove back. We went back to the strip club <laughs> during the day again. We had, l- we got there early. It was like quarter of noon. Wow. And, uh, maybe I should have said Dan's name. No, he's fine. He's engaged. Is he gay? He's not engaged. <laughs> he's got a girl. Oh, good he listens. Oh, this... she does. I don't think she listens. No, girls don't listen. By the way, this is uh, New Year's Eve, 1986. So. Yeah, yeah. He's 71 now. Yeah. So, anyways, so we went back, and then we we went to the, the, the we went to the strip club 
back the next day, and we got there before, like, fully open. The doors Ooh, were open, but there's no strippers there. Weird. And we put our dollars up, and uh, the stripper came in. It was, like, you know, 10 minutes of noon. Yeah. And she came in, and I went, ready when you are. Oh, nice. And she was in her, you know, full winter coat. Yeah. You know, and, all, and I was like, we were already there with our dollars up and our cocktails. It was uh-huh. pretty wild. And then New Year's Eve came, and it was, like, this big night. Yeah. And we were all just kind of, like, you know, whatever. We had, like, a few beers. But, like, last night, we had the craziest night ever. We were all, you know, we hit a huge gangbang. We stuck soap in our ass and uh, yeah. all that stuff. I should be clear, we didn't actually all fuck. Because I said Daniela's name as well, and uh, she's a, a wonderful woman. We didn't all fuck. I'm exaggerating here, clearly. Yeah. Uh, but you get it. We I got it. You got, you got crazy. Yeah, we shared a room. We all got shit-faced. We jumped around shirtless. Oh, yeah. She wasn't shirtless. Dan's straight. He's a good guy. Ah, oh, jeez. That was one thing about you, and we used to get pretty uh, blotto Sloppy. You were never hung over. I was always the next day. I was like, ah, and you were like, what are you doing? Get up. Uh, I think I was faking it because eventually that was one of the reasons I quit drinking. I was too hung over. Oh, all the time. I remember being at your house and I was like bedridden on your couch like, Ugh, and you're like, get up. We got to go do shit. But you've always been a, a hard hangover. I'm guy. the worst hang. You got to drink over. some water in there. Hydrate. I, I never think water. Get out of here. I'm boozing. Hand yeah. me some more brandy. No, just hydrate. In between drinks, you just guzzle some water. I know. I didn't. It's like wearing a condom. I'm like, ah, it takes the fun out of it. Yeah, well, I've not even down that road before that's as well. That's true. That's I'm, true. I'm speaking from, uh, you know, AIDS. You got a point. But anyway, so yeah, the New Year's pressure, it's a lot. But uh, I was in Ann Arbor this year, and uh, we're always working New Year's. Yes. Comics. But I tell you, I'm, I, I'm getting to a place where I don't want to work anymore, because it's not fun, usually. It's a little rowdy. Always rowdy and uh, annoying. But this time, boy, oh man, Mark, I was at the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase. <laughs> you get on your agents, email them every day until you get booked there. I already did it. Most underrated club in the country. Yeah. Because we always talk about, everyone talks about comedy on state in mm-hmm. Madison, which is unbelievable. Yeah. I think I'm there in May. Great club. Did my album there. Unbelievable club. And then, of course, the Heliums. And then, of course, uh, Acme, everyone talks about. Yep, yep. And then the Denver... Uh, comedy Works. Comedy Works. But nobody seems to talk about this Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase. I'm telling it to, like, A-list comics. They're like, I never heard of it. Never heard of it. It is the best. It's Gary Goldman's favorite club. Oh, wow. Joe DeVito's favorite club. Oh, wow. And Joe List's favorite club. Who's that? This is, he's on the up-and-coming uh-huh. list. I don't make any list, but whatever, you get it. How do you like this for a name? Hooligans, but W-H-O, Ligans. So you're saying who Ligans? Like, who are these idiots? Who like, are these Ligans? I mean, it, it's just a fun twist. I guess, but the thing about hooligans is I feel like you're inviting uh, riffraff. Uh-huh. Hooli- Let's go down to hooligans. We'll smash uh, beers on some women's heads and Yeah, I guess so. I figured, know. like, if we did a tour, because we're not known, we could be called hooligans tour. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, all right. It's but, a fun t- word play. But am I a hooligan? Ah, uh, you used to be. <laughs> I used to be a maybe ex hooligans. Uh huh. But then it sounds like we're gonna give them a lesson on yeah. life and how to get your act together. All right, forget I brought it up. Yeah, no hooligans. I'll sell it to some kid on the street. Remember, I had the idea for the atheists tour. I do remember that, but uh, that fell apart. It's so dark, you know. It's like, hey, we're gonna come to your town and tell you what's what. Yeah, it sounds, but we're not. We don't do that. No, we just no. happen to not uh, really believe it. But, but you know, what are we gonna do? Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. we could be agnostic tour. Yeah, but that doesn't have any bite. The tours don't. Work because you're splitting up the money now. I'm making eight bucks instead of yeah, thirty-four. Yeah, tours are silly unless you're doing giant rooms. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. Well, uh, anyways, I was in Ann Arbor and great uh, name to Ann Arbor Showcase. Sounds old school, like a big product. Yeah, yeah, it does. Well, it was a great town, also Ann Arbor, uh, Michigan, home mm-hmm. of the uh, the mighty Wolverines. Go blue, Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> so I go there, and uh, it's a weird weekend because. They flew me in a day early because I don't want to fuck around with New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. So I flew in Wednesday, no show. And then Friday was New Year's Day, no show. So I was four days, two nights with no shows. Oh, Jesus, that's tough. It's lonely and sad. Of and course. I watched uh, How to Make a Murderer. I watched all ten hours. Oh, that helps. Ten hours and ten minutes. What do you got that on the, uh, the, the laptop? The laptop. Nice. I put it right on my lap and uh, get cancer into my dick hole. And Can I get, maybe the cancer will kill the herp. That could be. Yeah, something to think about. Can I get your uh, Netflix password? I use Sarah's. Ah, I'll call her. Um, but yeah. I know. I don't know how they make any 
any coin over there because uh, everybody's just jumping around on passwords. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I never thought of it. Boy, maybe I should be kicking her a few bucks. No, it's, you're throwing her money all day. I don't know about all day, but I buy a cup of coffee occasionally. No, I'm saying you you help her out financially, huh? Oh, uh, I mean, I bought a plane ticket here and there or something and maybe That's a big. coffee, but I'm not giving her money. No, no, but I mean, you're you're helping. I would say I'm helping, but, uh, you know, we're a team. I don't want to make it sound like I'm paying alimony here. No. I mean, I'm not just like, here's your 500. No, 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 no. You know, I, I buy a lunch occasionally, maybe a bus ticket. Sure. What am I doing? We haven't even told the story. What am I doing? What's wrong with me? And hey, what, what's going on over there? Yeah, I'm in AA, and uh, uh-huh. for quite some time. Uh, that's a weird thing, the Ann Arbor, they call it AA. Some people kept being like, glad to see you're going to AA. Uh. And I was like, that's, uh, thank you. Yeah, Yes. Yeah. And then I realized it was Ann Arbor. Um but anyways, so I went to Ann Arbor, and what a city, what a town. New Year's Eve, usually uh, there's both shows packed, sold out, and the, the room, they give them noisemakers, but they didn't even make, use the noisemakers. What? They told me before, I'm like, what are you, nuts? You're That's giving insanity. them noisemakers? And they're like, don't worry, we've been here a long time, we've been doing the club for 40 years, just don't sweat it. And I'm like, these guys are idiots, what the fuck's wrong with them? Yeah. I did the show, not a peep. Wow. Great crowd. They just, they're there to see the show, they're, they're disciplined, they're amazing. And then I brought up uh, the, the this guy Russ was emceeing. He was great. He, he drove me around. He was such a sweet guy. All right, and, Russ. And hilarious too. And then um, this other fella, Nate, did the first. Uh, nah, I wish I could remember his last name off the top of my head, but I don't have it. But he was hilarious too. This guy, he, one of these guys that started when he was sixteen. Oh, jealous. And he's like twenty two, and he's got jokes. And he, ah. he killed. They both killed. And uh, I brought him up. Well, I mean. I was instructed to. I mean, I want to sound like I'm Springsteen bringing up Eddie Vedder or whatever. Yeah. But I, they, they came up, and uh, we did the countdown, and it was the most un-New Year's New Year's. It was a very business. If you don't have a girl to kiss, yes, and it's not you're not on a date, you know, you're not in Times Square or whatever, and you're not at a party, it just feels, and you're doing comedy, it feels very normal. It was very casual. We did the show, and then afterwards, I went back in the green room and hid because the audience was a little drunk. So yeah. Sat back there, and then Russ was like, you ready to go? And I was like, yeah, and he took me back to the hotel. We, got, we went out and got uh, pizza takeout. I felt bad. I kept him up all night because we were driving around looking for food. Uh-huh. Got the food, went back to the hotel, watched Making a Murderer, ate my food, went to bed. It was very un-New Year's. How about that? Very adult. Yeah, no kissing, no fucking. My fear is always that some girl's going to drunk and jump up on stage and be like, give me a kiss, you sexy uh-huh. bitch, and take a selfie and then post it, and it's like a crazy uh-huh. thing. But that's just my uh, own ego or something. Right, right. But anyways, it was great. Get get to you. I'm sure you fucked someone in the eye or no, something like that. I got I, nothing. That's interesting. The New Year's. You, do you have a guilt? Of, not a guilt, but like a, a let down feeling like, ah, shit, I'm not going nuts. Or I, gotta, I should do something. No, because I'm 33. And I, I've been hanging out in nightclubs since I was 18. I'm yeah, done with all that. Good point. What do I need to do? I still have, but I have a, I have that with everything. I'm like, I'm missing something. I have this fear of missing things. It's, where, where, what's the, the scientific term? You got a fear of heights. You got a fear of spiders. It's all terms for this. I think I know it. What do you got? Wally Pip complex. Is that right? I think you got something of that. I got a Pip. Wally Pip was the uh, he played first base for the Yankees. He sat out. Lou Gehrig took his place and Ah. then never got out of the gate. Played two thousand one hundred and thirty in a row. So I think the complex of missing something or getting replaced is Wally Pip. Okay. Maybe you're afraid you're not there that someone else will come in and be like, uh, you know. The new yeah, norm. It's not as much someone else coming in. It's just me wasting my life and wasting the moment and all that. No, I've had that, but I think a lot of times you miss moments because you're chasing something that you're no, talking about. Yeah, no, you're true. That's true. I was in the mind. I went back, I meditated, I masturbated, and uh, I tried to suck my own dick again to no avail. Uh, yeah. See, if I was there, I'd be like, ah, I got to get on Tinder quick. I got to go look in the lobby. I got to go outside. I would just freak out that I'm, I'm missing something. Yeah, you're spinning. You got to relax. I'm spinning. Enjoy. I'm spinning. You've succeeded. You're here. You're in the now, buddy. You're I very know. successful. Well, I just, you know, with that New Year's kiss, ah, it would bug me if I was just in a, you know, using the landline on the toilet in the hotel. Right. Well, I uh, FaceTimed with the uh, All right. my baby. And, That's something. Uh, you know, a little FaceTime. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, boo, boo, boo. Yeah, because uh, for New Year's, I went to Seattle with Schumer, ah. and uh, it was a big one, baby. It was the Key Arena, and 15,000 seats sold out. That energy is in the air of, like, the place is sold out. You can hear the hum of the crowd. It's New Year's. Schumer's putting makeup on. Everybody's backstage drinking. Ah, it was just amazing. And uh, it was the best crowd. We've done, like, I don't know, seven or eight shows on this tour, and it was the best one. Best. I went out there, did new stuff at a fucking arena, had a hot one. The jazz band went up. They were on fire. And then Schumer went up, psh, fucking champagne bottle in hand. They get on their feet, and she she had a great line. She's chugging out of the bottle, and she goes, you know, I don't drink like I used to. I used to use a glass. 
Oh, wow. Boy, Plays that's, with bananas. That's hilarious. That's a great opener, you know? Yeah. Anything on that fear? Fear of missing out? Yeah, I mean, it literally is just called FOMO. It's fear of missing out, which is FOMO. an actual psychological uh, disorder. But that's kind of ah. like a common thing now, too. The hashtag of FOMO. No FOMO. Yeah. FOMO. FOMO sexual. Wait a minute. Fear of missing out. Yeah. Okay. Ah, FOMO. I like that. No kidding. It's nice to know it's a real thing. Yeah, it's a great museum. Yeah, the FOMO. All right. Uh, so, but how about this? On the way to Seattle, Schumer's been hooking up the flights lately, but she forgot to, to book me, or somebody forgot to book me, so they booked me last minute. I had the worst flight ever. Middle seat in the back. Oh. No recline. Six hours, baby. Oh, jeez. So I'm like, fuck, I'm in the middle seat. I've gone from private jet to middle back. Who am I? Chaz Bono? Yeah. I don't know if that made sense. I don't know who that is still. He's a uh, transgendered, weird fat guy. Right. I think I think he's transgendered. Uh, okay. I always get confused because it's Bono and yeah. it's Chaz Palantino. Palantari? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Bono. Right. And then there's Yoko Ono. Yeah. Then there's... She should be dead pretty soon. She's got to die. She stinks. Yeah. <laughs> Talentless. Talentless whore. That's one of her songs. I don't know about whore. I don't know if that's fair. I guess not a whore. Talentless. But I'll, I'll sign off on talentless. That seems about right. She's a talentless C. I don't want to say she's a talentless, but I haven't seen the talent. I don't want to cast dispersions. Well, I mean, she may be doing backflips over there. Well, by the way, she lives down the street from here. Well, come on by and do something for us. Yeah. Juggle. She might be doing a one-handed handstand and shooting lawn darts out of her well, pussy. Well, you know? put that on YouTube, because we haven't seen <laughs> shit from you. Yes, I will concur that I have not seen a lot of talented Not stuff a drop! Coming from Yoko. <laughs> Nothing. And I have to be tr- honest, I haven't seen much from John in a while, either. <laughs> yeah, where's he been? I don't know, but... Yeah. Something. He gets a lot of fans in the park always crying. He must not be that good. Oh, that's the best. If you ever want to have fun, folks, real quick, side note, yeah. and you've, we've done it together... Go down to uh, Strawberry Fields in Central Park West. They fight over who's going to play what John Lennon song. It's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, peace and love. It's this peace joint, and they're like, hey, I just played Love Me Do. Right. And it's like, fuck you, you do Return to Sender. Those are, you know, that's, that's an Elvis song, but whatever. Well, that, that's a good bit. Yeah, that could be a bit. That's funny. A great sketch, too. Yeah. I want to sing Peace and Love. No, no, you sing yesterday. Yeah, all we were saying is peace, give a piece of chance. <laughs> right. All I'm saying is get the fuck out of my territory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, get over to all Seattle, right. the middle seat. Middle seat, so I go up to the counter, and I put on my big puppy dog eyes, I, I tie like a bow tie around my neck, and I twirl my hair up into pigtails, and I go, hey, hey, how do you feel about hooking a little lady up with a better seat, huh? And they go, sorry, asshole, back of the line. I go, come on, look at this, I'm a Delta whatever, I'm a, I'm a medallion douche. And they go, back of the line, I go, come on, buddy, what do you got for me? And I'm giving him, like, the stink eye, please help me, I love you. And he goes, all right, he takes my ticket, he goes, I'll put you in an exit row, and I get the hell away from me, I go, hey, hey, it worked. Oh. I get on the plane, exit row middle. Oh, you get a little extra room at I'm least. In, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm complaining. Beggars can't be gay, but uh, so I'm in the I'm in the exit row. I'm up on the plane, but I'm still in the middle. God, I hate that middle. So I'm sitting there, and I had the chatty guy to my right. There's a Jewish fella, yarmulke, and he was like, "Ooh, boy, New Year's. <laughs> These planes, peanuts, huh? What do you What do you say? Overhead space, always full. How about that, Yanni? Just going on and on. I'm like, all right, all right. Seat next to me is vacant, and I'm uh- like, oh boy. Here we go. I'm watching everybody file in, just mm. praying. Oh, they walk past. Yes, they walk past. Yes. And this guy won't shut up. Hey, you might have that window. Bark, 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 bark. And uh, so I was like, all right, whatever. Here we go. And then one guy, this guy must have been 10 feet tall, giant black guy, full suit, bow tie, sits down next to me, reeks of B.O. Oh. I'm talking, this guy, this is like Muslim B.O. Oh, He was geez. a Muslim. I see. It reeked of like curry, B.O., and cab. Oh, boy. He had it all, all the stereotypes. It was a doozy. Oh, jeez. I mean, this was like offensive B.O. This was beyond B.O. Oh. B.B.O. B.B.O. Yeah. And That's I'm my favorite like, property of Monopoly. Oh, uh, Yeah. That was a railroad, right? I don't know. Uh, B and O, I think. Well, I feel like I'm stinking it up worse you, than that guy. You all right? Episode. You look sad. <laughs> I just think. 
No, you're great. This episode stinks on my end. What? I stink. All right. Well, we now- shouldn't have started when we weren't actually started. I thought that was a good start. I don't know. I had the bun thing. That might have been the something. The bun was gold. It was natural. We had Susie Q and... Uh, Which one's Susie Q? That was the first girlfriend. Oh, Steph. Steph. Funny Steph. Steph W. Yeah, she's all right. Yeah. yeah. She was cute. She's a mother. Isn't that strange? That I have a girl, an ex-girlfriend that's a mother. Yeah, it could be yours. Very bizarre. Yeah. I don't think so. We okay. haven't had sex since uh, 1988. Well, the kid's 30. And it was in the belly button. So uh, okay. That's well, pretty new. That'll do you. All right, so the Muslim guy stinks. He's stinking it up, so I'm just like, and I'm on no sleep, and I'm just like, ah, fuck. So I just, I just got to ride it out. I just try to sleep. I pop a bunch of sleeping pills, and I just conk out. But man, that B.O. Was, was like smelling salt. It was waking me up every five minutes. I, I can't even tell you how bad this B.O. was. Finally, I get there. Great. We're in Seattle. Me and the, me and the band members jump in a car. We head on down to the arena. They do a sound check. I'm snapping pics. There's always food backstage. I love free food. That's my favorite thing on earth, I've decided. I'm just popping the, the cold cuts in and putting mustard, just squeezing mustard in my mouth. I'm having a blast. I make a, a rum and coke. I'm having a great time. Uh, Schumer shows up. When Schumer shows up, it's a fucking thing. It's like Elvis came in. You know, she's got right. like eight security with her. She has a baby on her arm and a, like a, a llama behind her, the whole thing. And uh, so we do a group prayer. We always do a, like a phony, ironic prayer. That's a that's a blast. Uh, I gave a speech, totally bombed. Uh, and then we're just hanging out. We're talking. Good times, good times. Show starts. All right, just fill it in. I, uh, the band goes up. I go up. I'm feeling it. Hot set, get off, Schumer annihilates, killing it. She's like, thanks for taking out, you know, it's Seattle. So she's like, hey, thanks for taking time out of composting to be here. Ah! Going bananas! Right, that's fun. Yeah, she had some good quips ready to go. Then we jump off stage. We go to a private party in the roof of the key arena. Free food. It's like open bar. There's this, there's this Chinese joint in Seattle. They have the best Peking duck. So Schumer ordered a ton mm. of it. You ever Pop- had the Peking? Popular duck. Big duck. I like the Mighty Duck. Ah, uh, which one? Emilio Estevez. One, two, or three? Uh, part two seemed a little strange. Yeah, quack, quack, quack. Yeah, they're a local youth hockey team that becomes the Olympic team. Interesting. Seems a little far-fetched. That Gordon Bombay. He was weird. Also, what's this? If you ever want a shot at the pros, you can just get a shot at the pros? Right. The guy's been a lawyer for 12 years. Yeah. He's making the team? And who were those those brothers? They were just the one guy would just like hit the puck hard. That was his skill. Well, that was the that was the eighth grader. Yeah. Then there was the two black guys. They were brothers. They okay. were brothers, and they were also brothers. Brothers. Yeah. It was kooky. Yeah, yeah. That that one had a little too much legal bullshit. Like too many adults talking. Let's get to the hockey. Yeah, I liked it though. I liked the old timer skate guy. Teach them to fly. Oh, the Russian. I don't think he was Russian. Was he Russian? I assume every bad white guy is Russian. No, he was a good guy. Oh. Oh! He was a good guy. He made the skates, Gordon and the bang. Right. He's like, it's all I ever wanted to do. And he's like, why did you quit? Maybe he was Russian, now that I'm doing an impression of him. He had something going on. He sounds Russian in my impression, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not much of an impressionist. No, me neither. So, we, we pick out at this private party, and Schumer goes, well, it's 11. We better hightail it to the Space Needle. Whoa! Yeah! We head on over to the Space Needle. We get there, we take the elevator all the way up. Giant party up there. It's I, I heard it was five hundred bucks a plate. <whistles> but Schumer got us all right in. It was probably like fifteen of us. Boy, she's we, like Obama. Yeah, right? And she hates guns. So we get in there and uh you know, the clock's ticking. Everybody, Schumer's got her man. The band's all brought their wives. And I was like, Why didn't you tell me you could bring a girl? She goes, I figured you'd find one here. I was like, Ah, damn it. So I'm running around. Three Two, Uh-oh. I go up to the waitress, and I go, hey, honey, baby, doll, <laughs> how about a smooch? And she goes, I totally would, but I'm working. And I go, what are you kidding? It's New Year's. Who gives a sh-? Working, schmirking. Yeah. And, she, and she like almost threw a plate of food at me, because I kept like begging her. So now it's New Year's. I'm like, all right. So I go, how about a hug? And she walked away. Oh, and uh, so now I'm just walking around, bummed, because everybody's making out. And the, the confetti's falling, the balloons are falling, and there's fireworks everywhere. You can see the fireworks out of the space. It was wild. Overlooking the city, and I'm bummed. So I walk around. I catch eyes with this broad. Uh-oh. It was out of a movie. It was like out of a bad 50s movie. I catch eyes with her. I go up to her, and I go, nice night for a kiss. Oh, that's she, nice. She goes, I was so glad. She's like, I'm so glad you, you noticed me. And I was like, how could I not? Boom, I tip her. Big, 
big fat one on the lips. You tip her? I tipped her. I dipped. Oh, dipped. I dipped. You can't say tip with a waitress. That oh, means no. tip. No, this is, a, this is a lady. Oh, you dipped her. Non-waitress. I Non-waitress. dipped her. Non-waitress. Yeah. Oh, I thought you, you slipped her a finsky. You, you palmed her a fin and then gave her a kiss. I should have. She was worth it. <laughs> but, I mean, I dipped and kipped and whipped and you uh, whipped her i whipped her good oh right around midnight yeah <laughs> and uh we we kissed and then and she was like all right i'm going back to the hotel and i go i'm staying here and then uh, we're like she's like all right whatever she was that one for going late mm-hmm. and uh so she goes back to the hotel and i stay there it's me and like two other diehard weirdos in the band and uh that's a good name for a band diehard weirdos yeah the dhws yeah. so we're going hard i'm chugging whiskey this girl i try to get further with her she leaves and then eventually the, the Space Needle, we got kicked out because I was drinking on the uh, balcony part. Uh-oh. So they're like, you guys got to go. And also we had been pretty, I was like dancing on tables and shit. I was in a, I was in a bad way. And uh, so they kicked us out, which is a weird thing. It's like, you're out of here. And you're like, all right. And then you wait in the elevator for 20 minutes while it goes down. Right. So then I finally get downstairs. Me and the guys are like, oh, you got us kicked out, you piece of shit. I don't have any weed. And I go, you want weed? I'm asking everybody for weed. I'm just going around, who's got weed here? I'm out on the sidewalk. Find a guy with weed. He smokes us out. We smoke on the sidewalk. I see a hot blonde, and I go, what are you doing out here? She goes, ah, I got kicked out of the space needle. I go, me too. We start making out. What happened to the dip girl? She the girl left. Whipping. I got kicked out. She was in there. You whipped her and she left? Yeah, I whipped it good. <laughs> she was. Still, she's like a, like a good citizen. She was up there. Oh, I see. So now we're heading back to the hotel. We just say, fuck it. It's freezing out, but we walk it. And it's just a great, there's guys with, you know, the, the noisemakers and the kazoos and the rah, just walking by. Everybody's got, like, top hats on. It was just, you know, arm in arm with a lady. Everybody was having a great time. See, this is where we're cut from different cloths. Yeah. I see those noisemakers, the hats, I want to kill myself well, or you swim just walk home. And you walk by. Yeah, but I had to walk by. I just hate them all. Ah, <laughs> I'm like, get out of here, you fucking idiots. Yeah, it was Noisemaker. It was joy. It was outside. I, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. So we get back to the hotel. I check my phone. I've got an email on my Facebook fan page from old Kissy Face. And she the goes, whip. The whip. Uh-huh. And she goes, What are you up to? And I go, I'm back at the hotel. Come on down. Now, what'd you do with Blondie? We just kissed and I, I walked away. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, she was with her mom, I think, which was odd. The mom was like real trash. She was like, Yeah, when I was kissing her. It was Interesting. odd. Interesting. It's an odd town, in Seattle. A lot of hippies. It's my favorite one. It is a great town. I do love it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're heading back to the hotel. Now I'm in the hotel lobby, and I check. I'm check, checking my phone before I go up. I'm I'm shit housed. I get. I look on my Bumble. This one girl's like, private messaged me on Bumble, and she's like, "Hey, what happened? I thought we were gonna meet up because I apparently had swiped right." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Coming to the hotel," and she's like, "I'm on my way." I was like, "Oh my god!" So now I got Whippy and Bumble coming over. <laughs> I got Whippy and Bumble. You get a whip bum. So I gotta figure out. All right. Now, this is where the wi- the women are going to hate me here, but i got to figure out which one is the sure thing, because I, I don't want to go bu- boneless. Yeah, you don't want to go boneless, but you got a yeah. bum whip. i got a bum whip, and i got a bum bull. Yeah. Oh, a bum whip, yeah. A bum whip. A whipple. So, uh, so then, what's her face? Uh, Whippy is like, all right, I'll come down, but I live kind of far away. I'm already home. I'm going to come down, but can we not go to your room? And I go, of course we don't have to go to my room. Bumble, get over here. Right, right. Now I have a plan. Or Not now go I to the room. Yeah, she wanted to hang out in the lobby. I'm like, why? Why? We are attracted to each other. We met from across the room. We locked lips. It was magical. I dipped you. I whipped you. And I tipped you. Why wouldn't you want to fuck? Even if you're not going to fuck, just hang on the road. What are you, Frost Nixon? You got to sit in the lobby and fucking <laughs> have know, a get right? to know each other? She's scared of that room. I don't know. Come Maybe on. She thought I was a rapist. I the don't know. The lobby, you look like a hobo. That's what I said. You look like a whipped bum. Yeah. So I was like, all right. Look, I was like, why wouldn't we have the most fun we can have? Now I'm like trying to convince her because she was pretty. Yeah. And I was like, why wouldn't we have the best time? She goes, ah, you got a point. I just don't feel right. I'm like, Why? You're stupid. You're ignorant. You're a dumb person. So, fuck it. <laughs> oh, She's boy. out. She's out! I don't, I don't stand for this shit. I'm a feminist. So, uh, <laughs> Bumble shows up. Bumble's cool as a cucumber, but she's giving me that, she's negging me. She's doing that bullshit. What's that mean exactly? She's like giving me, like she's insulting me to like, to like show she's not oh, that yeah. into me. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, hey, S- sloppy Joe, you showed up here. Right. We're on my turf. Yeah, I never liked that. Girls would do that to me. I never got it when they were like, yeah, why don't you 
buy me a drink, you nerd. Yeah. And I'll just be like, well, I don't want to be insulted. Right. I'm not really into that. I'm I, not doing that to you. Exactly. And girls hate it, I think, when we do it, so don't do it to me. Yeah. Also, I should mention I'm high. I smoked weed with the guys. Oh, boy. So high and... and being like cool and flirty with a girl is kind of tough. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. I've never spoken to a girl when I was high ever. Or it any human. It ain't easy, Charlie. Usually under the carpet wearing sandals. So we go up to the room. We're in the elevator, and I, I you know, part of me is like, "This is weird. This is weird." And part of me is like, "Ah, let it ride." Mm. So we get up to the room. We're just talking. She's sitting on the Shays Lounge. This like is a Shay. Yeah, hell of a hotel. And uh, I'm, I'm, I remember standing by the window looking out going, wow, what a city. I had a great view. And she's like, yeah, yeah. And she, she was weirded out a little bit. And she's doing like the whole like, so you ever want to headline your own shows? Are you going to be an opener your whole life? And I'm like, what is this? What, what's going on? And when I'm high, my libido goes down. So I wasn't like, there was a part of me like, just get out of here. Right. You suck. Right. And, and also, just a side note. I'm opening for Amy Schumer in front of 18,000 people. Yeah. I'm not making 100 bucks. Yeah, what do you want? I'm making more than people make for a week of headlining. Exactly. What's wrong with you? And she was trying to, I know she was impressed, but she was trying to play it cool. But that Yeah, was, that's that trying to, you but know. But it's still annoying because it was just, it showed how insecure she was and, you know, she was just nervous and that was her way of dealing with it. Right. So, uh, I, at one point I go, oh, I, she annoyed me so much. I go, ah, I hate to tell you this, but, uh. This girl I kissed showed up. I'm lying. I'm just looking at my phone, lying to her, like, you gotta go. Oh, no, this is what I said. I said, uh, I have a prostitute on the way. A she, prostitute? Yeah, I swear. She goes, what? And I go, I got a prostitute on the way. You gotta go. You don't want to see this. She goes, why'd you get a prostitute? I go, look, I'm trying to get laid. I just want to have sex. We're sitting here talking. I ordered a prostitute. It was kind of me being bitter. Right. I was being projecting. Yes. In the form of a prostitute. Mm-hmm. Little, little uh, window into my fucked up brain there. Just like, you gotta go. And she's like, I wanna meet her. I'm like, what? She's like, I wanna meet the prostitute. This is not a news story for you. You've had a lot of girls that wanna meet the other girl. Yes. This happens a lot. They wanna meet the cop. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck this other person. Well, I wanna meet her. Yeah, there's a lot of that. That's interesting. Well, at least twice. Well, it's because it's a weird thing with women. It's Women almost paint themselves in a, uh, in a corner here, in a horner, because... They know that sex will get them in, but they don't want to have sex right away. Right. But then if that other girl is, if another girl's willing to, they're like, shit. She's just, it's kind of like when me and you were sitting here and, and David Letterman walks up and he goes, all right, I need one of you guys to be on the show. And we both go, well, you should do it. And then I go, no, you should do it. And I get, you go, you should do it. Then I go, all right, I'm doing it. And you go, fuck. Right, right. It's the same thing with vagina. Yeah, I, can I know see it's, that. It's a leap. Yeah. But go with me. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm right. right here. Sorry. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I thought you were leaving. No, I'm right here. So uh, so she's like, who's this other girl willing to give up, blah, blah, blah. She knew the score. And uh, I don't I don't know if she knew the score, but I was like, this prostitute's coming. And then this, this is how crazy it got. I'm so high and drunk that I'm like, you got to go. Prostitute's coming. She's like, I'm not going. I'm like, oh, shit, she just texted me. She's here. Oh, boy. Go hide in the bathroom. So I knock on the door. She's hiding in the bathroom. She's terrified. I knock on the door, and I go, like, mmm. And I go, look, I changed my mind. I got another girl in here. You got to go. And she goes, mmm. And I go, you got to go. This girl's in the bathroom. I, wait, wait, I changed my so mind. You're in, the, you're in your hotel room now? I'm in the front. I'm, I open the front door. Of your room? Of the room, and she's in the bathroom, like, five feet so away. she's hiding in the bathroom. Yes. You're pretending there's a whore there. I'm pretending there's a whore on the other side of the door. A prostitute, excuse me. Yeah, a tramp. A, a, a hooker. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I'm going. I'm doing the muffling. Ironically, you're turning a trick on this girl. Aha. Uh-huh. Ah, mm. uh, we're talking. That's not, that's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> so, uh, and I go, look, I, I, may, I like, escalate. I'm like, look, I told you, I'm not giving you money. She's Mm, I know you came all the way down here, but I'm not giving you the fucking money. Mm, I got a whole, I'm like, I'm like Neil Simon here. I got a whole dialogue. <laughs> right. I'm like fucking, uh, man? No, shit. Manchester United. No, what's that guy's man name? Man versus nature. Ah. Orson Welles. Wait a minute. Orson what's his Welles. fucking name? George Orwell. No, the guy. I think Orson David Welles. David Mamet. David Mamet. Oh, he's a screenwriter. Great dialogue. Oh, I see. The dialogue. I got you were great going dialogue. For. I yeah. thought you were going for that. It's not, I think it's more Orson Welles. You got a radio show. You're doing like the ah, squeak. Yes, <laughs> right. Whore of the Worlds. Yes. There it is. Yes. So uh, I go, get out of here. And I slam the door. And it's just a big kagunk, you know, and I go and I go, did you hear that shit? Can you believe that fucking tramp? And she's like, Jesus, that was fucking terrifying. I was like, I know the pimp might come up and who knows what's going to happen. She's like, I got to get out of here. And I go, I know, I know. So I go, I'll walk you down. 
But what? You can't walk it down too soon because you would have bumped into the the prostitute. I know, but she's got to put her shoes on. She's got to put her coat on, get her purse. So there's there's a minute. We give it a minute. She's leaving now. She's leaving. But hold on. But she was already up in the room. This is quite a story. You had her in the room. Hold but now on. she's leaving. I'm not that dumb. Okay. This ain't my first uh, rape. All so, right. Wait a minute. Oh boy. So uh, we got a lot to take out this episode. Yeah, a lot of editing here. So it's we get Sally Menke. Ten minutes. Who? That's Tarantino's editor. Oh, wow. Jesus Christ. What a pull that was. <laughs> She's dead now. Oh, uh, good. No. We could have used you for the hateful eight. It was a little long. It certainly was. All right. No way Sally would have let that fly. Nah. Thelma Schumacher is uh, ter- uh, Sir Scorsese. Right, right. Scorsese. Scorsese. Hey, uh, Quint, we don't need a slow motion shot of horses running. In a three-hour movie! (laughs) Here's a fun fact about Hateful Eight. The the N-word was not anywhere in the script. It was all improvised. (laughs) Wow, that would be something. Kurt Russell should be hung. Um, He was great, by the way. Yeah, he's always great. He's my favorite, I think, in the whole movie. All right, so... So she's about to leave. She's putting on her shoes. She's putting on her bag. The fake prostate's gone. I go, I'll walk you down. She goes, all right. We get in the elevator, and I was like... Uh, she's like, that was so crazy. She's like, her heart's fluttering. She's like, oh, my God. I go, yeah, that was crazy. But doesn't she think you're a fucking psychopath piece of shit right now? You're ordering prostitutes? Yes, I think she did. I think but I think she's like, this is showbiz. I'm in the heart of it, baby. This guy was just opening, you know, the, for the biggest comic. Now he's getting prostitutes. Yeah, this is showbiz 1973, like Lower East Side. Well, she was, at one point during the night, she was like, why do you get prostitutes? You could probably pick up chicks. What are you doing? You're like a normal looking guy. You're just, you know, you're opening for Schumer. I was like... Ah, I don't want to do all the work. It's a lot of work. She's like, oh, weird. I was like, I did a bunch of blow. I just, when you don't like a girl, you can really just get free and like get imaginative. I guess so. So uh, we get down the elevator, and I was way up on like the millionth floor. And by the time we're on like the tenth floor in the elevator, I go, you know, I was joking with that whole thing. She's like, what? I was like, yeah, I made up the whole thing. She's like, well, who was on the door? I was like, I made it all up. That was just one sided. And she was like, are you fucking kidding me? And she like flipped out. She's like, you are weird. Oh my God, what's wrong with you? I was like, ah, I'm just playing around. And I go, all right, I'll see you later. The door's open. And she goes, really? And I go, yeah, yeah. And I, and then I was like, what? You want me to walk you out the door? And she's like, you know, I would have fucked you. And I go, oh boy. is that right? And I knew she would have. Of course, she came over. Yeah. And I, and I go, Oh, really? Well, why didn't you just say that? And she goes, I don't know. I, you can't really just say that. I was like, yes, you can. I was teaching her a lesson. Oh, uh, you just her a lesson. Just tell me you want to fuck. I hate all the games. Yes. So I go, well, let's go back up. We go back up. Wild sex. Oh, you did it. Yeah. Oh, great. Crazy, did crazy the, sex. Did the pimp ever show up? No pimp. Oh. But I backhanded her a few times. Oh, no, Jesus. Kidding. The gun, the backhand, the I'm, rape. You got to go easy I'm here. I'm joking. It's a new day and age. You know? This know. is 2016, for God's sakes. That David Mamet. Yeah. He's dark. I still think it's Orson Welles. Orson Welles. Yeah, I think it's Welles. He was even worse. Or Sally Minky. So, uh, with wild, just rough lie, I just lied to you fucking, you know? Oh, yeah. That seems like it'd be fun. Yeah. And we just go at it. And, uh, but after all these shenanigans, all these fun and games, it's like 5 30 in the morning. We're fucking. We stop fucking at six. I have a nine a.m. pickup, so we talk a little bit. We have a, some bedside manner, yada yada yada. Then I pass out at like seven, hungover, eh, 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 wake up call. Hello, wake up, Mister Norman. I was like, ah, fuck. It's like eight fifty four. I'm like, ah, shit. Well, it's probably like eight forty five. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, just sleep in. You got the whole hotel to yourself. I gotta go. I pack all my shit, and she goes. You don't want to fuck one more time? And I go, ah, I do, but I really got to go. Yeah. It's like 8.53 now, and she's like, oh, you got time. So I go, all right, I take all my clothes off, we fuck. Boy, another roll. Another roll in the big old hay. Boy. And we just went at it. I'm just, I pull out, I jizz on the chandelier. It's all crazy. And I put my shit back on. I just go, toodaloo. And I run downstairs, I get downstairs at 9, like 9.15, the guy was like, what the fuck? I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We go to the airport, middle seat again! Oh, ah! all back to the middle. Back, full circle. There ain't gonna be any middle anymore. Yeah, couldn't sleep, watch, watch um, Black Mass. Oh, yeah. P, to quote you... P fucking you. That movie stunk. Not a good one. Ah, what a great prayer. You got Bulger. You got uh, fucking Depp. I thought we were going to have some gold here. Yeah, really lacking that Woo. film. Not a great motion picture. It should have been called Lack Mass. Speaking of uh, 
Eh, maybe black ass, black ass, black ass, black yeah. ass. Yeah, black ass. That sounds like a fun movie. Yeah, it does. Speaking of movies and going to movies and and good stuff, I gotta tell you about the. Uh, maybe we talked about it. Or maybe you saw the pictures of the video. I went to the uh, Michigan Theater. Yes, in Ann Arbor. You gotta go there next time you're in town. Is that movie or vaudeville? It's a it's a movie theater built in 1928. A movie palace. Oh wow! You ever hear that term? I love a movie palace. This is a real life movie palace. They're all and, gone uh, mostly. Beautiful theater and uh, built in 1928. I think there's another one across the street, but that became like an urban outfitter. So now it's just the sign. Uh, Gross. So I go to see Carol at uh, which is like Brokeback Mountain, but with women. Ah, much hotter sex scene. Oh, good. Very spicy. And so I go over there on uh, New Year's night. I took an Uber over there. I never used Uber before. I'm loving it. It's the best. Right? Loving the Uber. So I take an Uber over there and I go to the theater and uh, I made a little motion picture on my Instagram and I put one on YouTube. And I'm making these little travelogue videos now. I like that. Yeah, it's fun. But I went uh, over to the theater, and this place is a palace. It's yeah. exactly that. You go in there, and for a guy that goes to the movies and loves the movies, I mean, this is heaven to me. I went up into the balcony, and there's an organ player. Oh! No commercials, no like, whatever that horseshit is. It's just a guy playing an organ, and it's built for sound, so it's like pumping through. No amplification system. Just an organ player, and he's there with his tie, and he's just blasting it out. I put a, a video up. And uh, spectacular. And I'm up there. I get the big giant jug of popcorn. I get some M&Ms and a Coke. And I'm up in the balcony. I'm the only one up there. Yes. And I had like this meditative moment. I'm like, this is all I've ever wanted in my life. This curtains. And it starts projecting before the curtains open. So it's like the, it's projecting onto the curtains. Ah. And then they part. And they, you know, they sway in the breeze. Right. And they open it up. And it's like time for the movie. And uh, just a beautiful, uh, what do you call it, forum, uh, euphoria, what do you call Euphor- the lobby? Oh, uh, forum works. I think, whatever the hell it's called, a parlor? lobby. And a parlor, and they're wearing, they're wearing bow ties, the men wow. and the women are bow ties, and there's a ticket booth outside. I love and They're that. like, step right up, and you order through the window. It's like Purple Rose of Cairo. Here. Yes, and ten bucks. What? Fifteen fifty. This is that's a night price. Wow. New York City, fifteen fifty. Any time of the day, you can go to an actual movie palace mm. for for ten bucks. I think comics do. Maybe Amy's done it or someone's done it. Uh-huh. Comics do it occasionally, I guess. Well, she's too big for it now, I guess. But she probably do Michigan Stadium for God's sakes. Probably, yeah. But anyway, so I went and saw the movie, and this is a bummer. There's always a bummer somewhere. So I was sitting up there by myself, Uh-oh. and I had my uh, my leg crossed like a like a dude, you know, with the the uh, ankle on the other knee, yes, like this, not a not a not a leg, a full leg cross, like a half dude leg cross, yeah. And my toe Uh-oh. is touching the back of the chair in front of me. I'm not exaggerating. Literally, the toe is touching the back of the chair. My ankle's on my own leg, and this guy comes up behind me, and I didn't even know he was there. He's like, "Excuse me, sir," and I was like, "Oh, uh, hey," and he goes, "Uh." My staff and I work very hard and a very long time to make sure these chairs are in prime condition. Could you please stop doing that? Huh. And what I was doing was so my I didn't know what he was referring to. Right. I was like, I'm not sure. I was looking at my popcorn, my soda. I was yeah. like, what? And he's like, your foot on the chair. It's a lot of effort to keep this place pristine. Huh. And it really bothered me for multiple reasons. First of all, I don't like when people, we've talked about this before, I like when people open aggressively. Mm. Build up to aggression. Yes. Just say, oh, pardon me, sir. See how your toe's in the chair? Could you take that off? Sir? Sure. You don't have to open with, uh, you work very hard. I work hard. You yes. work hard. We're all working hard. Yeah. And he made it sound like I was like the guy in Naked Gun with my legs were hanging out and I was beating off and drooling right. and throwing up. Yeah. I was like, oh, my toe's touching the back of the chair. What a lunatic. And I was like, oh, I'm really sorry. And it soured me. I'm sour. I was soured by this guy. What a douche. What a weird, what a not, this guy's got no life. Yeah, it was really uh, annoying because it it hurt me because he was looking at me as like, look at this son of a bitch. Meanwhile, when he did that, I was in this meditative moment of like, this is, everything should be like this. Yes. This place is a palace. They should do everything to restore it. This is what it all should be like. This is magical. Right. And then I get yelled at, and I was like, I'm not that guy. No, you're the opposite of that guy. I, I got a long foot. Right, you do have a long, you got skis down there. And it was built for 1928. Ah, Back then, people were 4'7". seven. That's, that's a, true. the tallest person, the was, center of the U.S. basketball team. Basketball, yeah. Yeah, he was 3'6". Jesus Christ, wow, this guy really gave me the biz. He gave, he gave me the biz. Was he older? 
Hey, his forties or so. Ah, uh, you see, that's that's what you get. This dork is working <laughs> at a fucking movie theater when he's forty. That's his. That's why. That's his problem. This is all he's got is telling you to put your twinkle toes down. I get, but that's the thing. This is, we've talked about this before on the podcast. It's his one little piece of authority. Exactly. This is his one thing he has. Yes. But uh, I just wish he could have been pleasant and just been like, oh, pardon me. You, 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 I would have been like, oh, shit, I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. mean that. This place is great. Beautiful sure. theater. I just don't think people open aggressively. I don't like it. It doesn't get anywhere. Now you're angry. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it starts. But can I just say this? Mm -hmm. Just a, a, a key point here. Yeah. Imagine if you were black. Yeah. Then you could do like, the, ah, this guy's racist, obviously. Oh, it, yeah, it that's would be a, easy to go to that route because you weren't doing anything. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I was just thinking to myself, this is, if I was black, if I'd be listening to this story going, well, that's white people problems right there because they have to live that way with, you know, uh -huh. police open with aggression when they're walking down the street. Right. So, uh, you know, a guy telling me to take my foot off a thing. But it just bothered me because uh, my foot wasn't, I wasn't resting my foot on the goddamn thing. Yeah, just touching. I'm just, I'm a, I'm a lanky fella. Right. And you got now an old theater. That's the back of a seat. Get over it, you loon. But that is that, that is that, that's the thing that happens with race sometimes where you have to wonder everything that happens to us, we just go, oh, what an asshole. Right. But when it happens to a black person or a person of color, is that, that's an appropriate term, I guess, now, which is weird. I think it is, but it's all hazy. Because now I keep hearing everyone say people of color. Right. But colored is bad. Yeah, it's I know. Odd. And then there's the National Association of Colored People. Right, but that's like a thing that's been grandfathered in. Uh -huh. But if you say that colored fella, you're a piece of shit. But I know. to say people of color, that's acceptable. It's very confusing. It's silly. It's all silly. It's just people scared to say black, which I think is the best one. Right. But it is. it, it does suck uh, that people have to be like, is this, is this guy racist? Yeah. Because we had a friend that posted about she wasn't getting served. Right. Uh, she's like, oh, that was racist. But I'm like... Well, that happens. That's also New York. New York service is horrific yeah. everywhere. Like that yeah. happens to me, right? Daily. Yes. I just think in New York, people they don't give a shit. To me, that speaks to minimum wage uh -huh. more than it speaks to uh, race. Also, I look at it the other way too. Like growing up in a black neighborhood, there was a lot of like fuck that white guy. So I still look at it like maybe he's racist against like a maybe that black guy's racist against me. Right. Right. Why is that not an option? Yeah. When you go, hey, race is racist. Everybody assumes it's a white guy, mm -hmm. which is racist, but. Yeah. What can you do? I don't know. It's all confusing to me. Yeah, now. yeah. Well, there's been so much talk of red that I'm like, ah, I'm off race now. All Who right. knows? Who cares? I'll never be off it because it, it exists. Yeah. Uh, so then, speaking of race, I watched uh, Black Mass. Had a sour. I was soured, mm -hmm. and then I watched Straight Outta Compton, which I loved. Oh, interesting. Uh, so that was a long goddamn flight, but I watched that, and I got so into like NWA, I didn't know much about it that I like. Googled the shit out of it, then I YouTube the shit out of it, and watched like a documentary, so I know everything about the goddamn NWA. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, good times. Then I just got to throw a shout out. Got back to New York. Flew out in New York. Landed. Slept. Flew out the next day to Buffalo. Hour flight. Easy peasy. And I uh, did the Helium in Buffalo. Great club. Thanks for having me. We, I think we almost sold out two shows, and I had a great time. Went out with this kid, Josh Potter. Hilarious. Just a real unlucky fellow. You know, he's like short. I hate to, he's so funny. He's a sweet kid and I love him, but let me just get this, this bad part out. Throw it out there. He's one of those kids who's just got a dark cloud over him, like he has a shit life. Uh huh. He's, I think he was premature. So he has Ejaculation. one eye. Yeah, one eye's missing. Mm -hmm. He has these huge glasses, like Coke bottle, because the other eye's like super fucked. Then he's balding, short. We go out drinking all night. We get done drinking. His car gets towed. Ah. Oh. Ah, Jeez. and then I go. Well, who are you gonna call? He goes. Ah, I left my phone at the club. Oh my god! This kid can't catch a fucking break. Yeah. So we're walking down the street, and these these like dudes in a truck pull up, and he does like the radio show over there. Yeah. And they go, "Are you the guy from the radio?" And he goes, "Yeah." They go, "Get in." We jump in the truck. He brings us home. Oh wow! Yeah. So that was. Oh, a you fun caught moment. a break. He caught a break because I was there. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. So I want to say thanks, Josh, and thanks, Buffalo. And somebody's doing their album there. February 27th. Buffalo Helium. What kind of cloud is over, by the way? Is it Cumulus or a Sirius? Or I think a... it was, uh... What's the other one? Huron? Sirius isn't a cloud, somebody told. That's a star. Ah, that Someone makes sense. Someone tweeted at us and let us know. Cumulus is definitely one. That's a cloud, and then Sirius is something else, I think. Yeah, they said a cloud weighs, like, a million tons. What? And when, when it's gray, it weighs, like, a hundred million. 
because it's full of water. No kidding. Yeah. Well, I guess we got to uh, start wrapping up our dicks here. Yeah, please. Uh, let's plug some dates. Uh-huh. And by the way, I keep getting emails and tweets from people saying, hey, come to this town. Come to that town. I'd love to come to your town. Email the club. Email the, tweet at them. Email yeah. the club and say, hey, we want Joe List. We want Mark Norman. Please. We'd, we'd love to come out. Yeah, get some demand going. Yeah. But uh, in the meantime, I'll be at Wiley's in Dayton, February 5th and 6th. That's my sister's birthday. Don't forget. Oops. Both days. It was a long birth process. Big stuff. And then, uh, of course... Helium in Buffalo, I'll be there uh, February 25, 26, and 27, recording the 27th. I'll record all three days, but let's make the 27th the one that counts. Yeah. And then March 2nd through the 6th, St. Louis Funny Bone and uh, my old ball and chain, Sarah Talamash, will be with me on that one. That'll be fun. And then uh, Side Splitters, uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend, March 18 and 19. And then uh, Mark and I both will be at Moon Tower Comedy Festival yeah! in Austin, Texas, Woo-hoo! April 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. We might try to do a pod there, maybe. We definitely should do a pod. Yeah. So come on out to that. And uh, I think this week I'm in Helium at, in Philly. So come out to that. we got to fill that room, baby. It's a great club and a great town. Oh, one of my favorite cities, one of my favorite clubs. Yeah. Then in uh, February, I'm pretty excited about this, doing Wise Guys in Salt Lake, Utah, Salt Lake City. Oh, I've heard things. I heard it's a great room. You get weirded out because it's all like Mormony and whitey, but I, I hear it's great. Under the banner of heaven. And then uh, I need you for this one, folks. February 26th, I'm at the Southern. It's a theater in Charleston, Virginia. Char- no, Charlottesville. Sorry. Charlottesville, Virginia. It's a theater. Lord knows I'm not a draw, so if you live there or know a fucking dance team or a fucking just any group of people, old folks, anybody, bring them out. And, uh, yeah, then I'm in the March. I'm at the Laughing Skull in Atlanta, March 12th and all that. So thanks, everybody. And I got to give a shout out. I, I got heckled and I, I had a, a kid got bounced from, uh, from the helium in Buffalo. I did a Jewish joke. There was a Jewish guy with no sleeves. A sleeveless Jew. Sleeveless Jew is very rare. That's like a white leopard. Yeah. So uh, I was like, you're Jewish? You don't have sleeves? He's like, don't fuck it. He was like a wigger guy. Can I just say I hate wiggers? Sure. I like black folk. Hate wiggers. It's the same. I like carrots. I hate carrot cake. Uh Uh-huh. Get out of here, wigs. Now, which one of the... uh, the, uh, the, uh... Black people are carrots because they're the original. I see. Wiggers are the carrot cake because they got to add all this dumb shit. <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah, I think it's a good analogy. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> but uh, sorry, then this kid like he's like, "Don't fuck with us, the, the Jewish blah." I'm like, "What? You're a Jew? Get out of here!" So I see. He actually did leave. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. So, so who are you shouting out to? I, I'm shouting out an apology. I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I didn't. I love Jews. I didn't mean for him to get hostile. So who? But it sounds like you're trashing him also. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you're it, calling I, him carrot I'm, cake. I'm doing an audible. You're a carrot cake wig. Get out of my. <laughs> Get out of my club. Get out of your temple. Yeah, um, go to your temple. And I got to shout to, to also real quick. Uh, um, uh, what's his face here? Hold on. Uh, sh- <laughs> I lost what I was doing. Oh, oh yes, I just remembered. Yeah, uh, Carl Johnson. I got to remember. He did the second night. That sounds fake. In uh, Carl Johnson. <laughs> He did the second night. Uh, Nate, I don't know where he went. He quit comedy or something. But uh, He's a gay guy but, with sleeves. But Carl came out, and uh, he drove me to the airport, and he was super sweet. And Russ and Carl were great. Oh, and, nice. and Carl, I think, is a fan of the show. He's a fan of pods, at least. Yeah. Hopefully he's a fan of this pod. He yeah, get on pods. it, Carl. But, um, and he was great, too. And uh, just a great, great time in Ann Arbor. I loved every second. And... Uh, all right, sorry. I feel like I really lagged, lacked, lagged. I don't know. I feel like I, I triggered something. No, I stunk. I pu. I ate my own dick and toenails for a minute there. But I feel like we'll be back next week. And oh boy, I thought he was good, folks. Call in. Let me just know what you think. No, don't tell me if I thought I was bad. No, don't call. I'll but kill myself. Thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.